Hi friends, today's video is all about osteoporosis and yoga. How to safely continue a yoga practice if you have low bone density and what you need to limit, avoid, or modify. Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa, I'm a physical therapist, I'm an expert in osteoporosis exercise, and I'm a certified yoga instructor. And we're gonna go over all of these here and then we're going to get on the mat and I'll demonstrate for you how the best way for you to continue your yoga practice if you want to. And I think yoga is absolutely important and valuable for people with low bone density and osteoporosis. It has wonderful aspects that work on postural strength, spinal strength, balance and stability. It's great for making sure we have the mobility that we need to move correctly when we have low bone density. So I think it's absolutely appropriate, but we need to know what to limit, modify, or avoid so that we reduce our risk for injury. So number one here, I like to say that we should avoid or limit these fast flow classes. The classes that have us transition very quickly in between poses because it doesn't guarantee that we have the time to put ourselves in the best position for safety. So I prefer slower flow classes, movements in between poses that give us time to transition with good body mechanics. Now next up, one of the movements that we want to avoid with yoga is that deep spinal flexion, that deep forward fold, okay? We know this, this happens all the time in a yoga class. I'm gonna show you how to modify that when we come to the mat portion. But deep spinal flexion is to be avoided. But the opposite of that, some moderate spinal extension like a cobra, well that's okay and it's even beneficial. But we don't do deep spinal extension either. So just know, no repetitive forward folds, but we'll look at ways that you can modify that. Forceful twists or rotations. And forceful, I'm saying taking it to the end of the range and trying to get a little further. We avoid that. We don't want repetitive twisting or forceful twisting, but we can do some twisting and rotation as long as we're slow and mindful and listening to our body while we do that. Rotation is really important to a happy, healthy spine, but we need to do that in a mindful manner. We don't do inversions in yoga if you have osteoporosis. If you look at the size of the vertebra in our low back, they're nearly three or four times the size of the vertebra in our neck. And if you try to have your whole body to support that force, the vertebra in your neck and upper thoracic have more force than they're designed to carry if you have low bone density. So no inversions, I avoid those completely and binds. Binds are another area where I tend to stay away from binds. I don't include them in my class because I find that pushes us to the end range. It's forcing us to the deep part of the stretch. And I don't think that's always beneficial if we have low bone density. We can still accomplish a great deal in our mobility and stretching without having to do a bind. So all of the classes that I teach on YouTube are osteoporosis friendly when it comes to yoga and we can include things that are going to help the mobility of all of our joints from our toes, ankles, and feet to our hips and knees, shoulders, and back. And this allows us to move in the best ways possible so that we can be safe in all the activities we do. So next up, let's meet on the mat and go through how we can modify some of these poses and feel really confident when we're doing our yoga practice. All right, friends, let's talk about those deep spinal flexion poses and how we can modify them. And so the first one is absolutely, the one that comes to mind is our forward folds, our deep forward folds that we all love and we do repeatedly in class. Well, we should not be doing those if we have low bone density or osteoporosis. But I'm gonna show you a couple ways that I still try to get a similar feeling that is in a safer position. So one way is I will modify that flow with blocks. So we'll get ready to do the forward fold. We'll keep a long spine hinging at the hip, bend the knees and come back up. So this is how I will utilize a forward fold in my practice without doing a deep bend. And just for FYI, as I demonstrate some of these, I have low bone density in my hips, but I do not have low bone density in my spine. So you'll see me do some of the poses I say to avoid because I don't have low bone density in my spine. So that's one modification. Another 
way that I try to get that similar stretch or feeling that is in a safer position is with a long spine child's pose. So wide knees, hips hinge back, arms crawl forward, reaching. I really crawl those fingertips forward so we get that separation or that traction through the spine and the tailbone reaching back. So as we do that child's pose with our hip mobility, we have to make sure that as we come back, we don't begin to round the spine. If we're rounding the spine like this, we have to stop. So when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, as they come back and I see their spine round, we tilt back forward and lift their tailbone up. Then we push back just to make sure we just only go far back as they can go before that tailbone starts to tuck under. So keep that tailbone up as you reach back, crawl those fingertips forward and you can get a similar stretch in that position. So cat cow can have some extremes of spinal flexion that we want to avoid. So here's the modification for this. I will often see people doing their cat pose and this is a really aggressive rounding of the spine. And then we go into cow where we sink the belly and lift the heart. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with cow. Cow is okay when it comes to osteoporosis, but this cat stretch is too aggressive for rounding of the spine. So I will usually do this as a um, neutral. So we'll come into neutral spine, maybe with the tail tucked just slightly, and then sink into cow. Come back up to neutral with a tiny bit of tail tuck and sink in the cow, but I am not trying to get this aggressive rounding at all. We really want to keep things pretty neutral for the cat part and then sink into the cow. The other I will, option I will do will be go from child's pose um, to up dog to get a similar bit of motion without the aggressive rounding. So that's two options that I do for cat and cow instead. Downward facing dog. So I actually love this pose and it has wonderful weight bearing through the upper extremities and through the spine when we can get in an ideal position. It's great posture strengthening. This is really a lot happening in this pose, but it can be done incorrectly for people that are too tight. So as we come up into downward facing dog, if you have those knees really straight, it doesn't matter if your heels don't touch, don't worry. But if you find yourself, I can't do it, rounding the back, then we have to bend the knees. So soften the knees so that you can keep the tailbone high and a long spine. That's how we modify that one. If the knees go straight and you're rounding your back, then we're doing it incorrectly and that's less safe. So we need to bend the knees, tailbone up, long spine. Okay, if you're not sure, have somebody check it. Have somebody take a photo if you're doing this alone at home. Have somebody take a look at it so you can see, video record it, or if you're in a class, have your instructor look as well. So other flexion, deep spinal flexion poses that we avoid, and we have to remember, spinal flexion is not only forward, but it can also be to the side. So we would not want to do a deep side bend like that, or like this, and we don't want to do a deep side bend like that. However, I modify that to be more of a lengthening pose with a smaller angle. So I might do a side bend that's like this with an angle that's reading, reaching up and just over my right ear instead of over this way. So getting length through this side body without getting compression on the other side body. So that's a modification to this stretch, thinking about length versus curve. That's one way I do that. So let's look at rotation. So, oh, one more deep flexion stretch that I avoid, and that would be plow. So plow often will have us feet over the top, and this puts a lot of pressure on our upper thoracic spine. Oh, way too much pressure. That is a very risky pose and I would not recommend that for anybody. We can do, um, we can do that long spine child's pose instead, but plow would not be a pose I recommend. 
Now the opposite of those deep flexion poses are extension poses. And extension poses look like cobra or baby cobra. And these are actually very beneficial. So in these, we are activating the muscles along the spine, the muscles that help us hold better posture. We're reversing that, that hump or that forward curve which decreases the pressure on the vertebral bodies. So cobra is a beneficial pose. Up dog is a beneficial pose. So if this is already in your wheelhouse and it's comfortable for you, that is absolutely an okay pose to do. We could also do um, locust. So pressing the pubic bone into the mat, tucking the chin for a long spine, raising the arms and legs up. That is strengthening the muscles along the spine and hips, that's a wonderful osteoporosis exercise. Again, if this fits your practice, your fitness level, and your style. And now anytime I do back bending in that form, which can create a little pressure in the low back, that's really normal to have that sensation. Anytime I do that, I incorporate a counter pose with this long spine child's pose. So that just kind of takes some of that pressure off after you've done a little bit of that back bending. Here's the one exception. I don't do wheel pose. And here's an example of wheel pose. I don't do wheel pose. It's not comfortable for my body or in my practice. And wheel pose is an example of a deep back bend. So we don't do deep back bends or forceful back bends if we have low bone density or osteoporosis. And so that's one example of back bending we avoid. But in general, it's the forward ones that are more contraindicated than the backward ones. The backward ones can be beneficial at improving our posture. Now let's look at twists and rotations. And I'd like to do mindful twists and mindful rotations. I love all of the warrior poses. I think they're wonderful at balance and strength, posture, coordination, they're all beneficial. And then we can come to triangle. So in this position, and I like to use a block, again, trying to move smarter, not harder. So if we need to, as we come down here into this, <laughs> lose my balance, a little bit of rotation. I have a safe landing spot. So we can come down here and create a bit of safety in this pose with this rotation. And this amount of rotation is comfortable for my body. I'm not forcing it in that direction. And that's what you would want to do. If you get here and that's where it feels comfortable, that's where you stop. Maybe in several weeks, you'll be back here taking your time and slowly working through that. And whenever we transition from tall over to sideways, we're always moving from our core. And this is a, another protective strategy for doing rotations. On hands and knees, I will do some thread the needle again, gently. I'm not going for the deep stretch or to get to the very end but just to allow a little bit of healthy rotation in the spine, which is lubrication, which can help relax the muscles, which can help reduce pain. So I love a little gentle rotation for those that are able to do it. When it comes to the hips, pigeon is often, uh, it's often a pose that you'll see in different, in different circles that they say not to do. But I think our hip mobility is really, really vital. And I think pigeon is on a case by case basis on who should do it and who shouldn't. For people who getting into pigeon, it is very difficult. I recommend you do not do it unless it's easy for you to get into the position of pigeon without rounding your back and without feeling extreme tightness in your hip, then you should choose an alternative and I'll show you those alternatives. But for people who do do pigeon, who find it a reasonable and happy, you know, a comfortable pose, Getting into this position here, dropping the back knee and the back foot, and just lifting the heart. And often, this is enough of a stretch. We can get enough of a sensation of stretch. I can scoot that back knee a bit instead of trying to fold down over that hip, which can be a, a too aggressive a stretch. So if you want to modify pigeon, this is how I would modify it. Keeping the heart up, okay? Other alternatives for pigeon, sitting long-legged, cross 
one leg across, wrap that knee with the other arm, one hand back to prop you up nice and tall. And then as you inhale, inhale for length and then exhale gently for your rotation and hugging that knee in. So that will help get that hip range of motion. The other is to do that figure four stretch. So we cross the ankle over the opposite knee, lift that leg up, thread the needle in here so you hold the thigh, relax the head down, leg goes up. So now we're getting another hip stretch, but we're in a nice spine safe position. For those that, I'm, I'm skipping back to plow now, but for those who liked plow, legs up the wall is a nice alternative stretch to get a similar kind of lengthening through the legs in that position and through the hips. It's a much more kind of like a resting pose. Um, another pose that we're just careful with, but I still do it, is hugging knees to chest. I don't do an aggressive squeeze of knees to chest. I just let the knees come to wherever their natural end point is without kind of tucking the tail up or rounding the low back. You'll feel that when you get there. So let the knees just come in gently as you do that. And it's, uh, it's a-okay -okay to do this one side at a time also. And that's a wonderful stretch to help maintain our mobility. The other way I work rotation in, in a safer manner, is lying on our backs and swaying the knees side to side. To me, this is one of the most beneficial poses for maintaining rotation in our hips and in our lumbar spine. And this is in an unloaded position. So laying on our back, there's no pressure on our joints. There's no pressure on the vertebra and we can get a nice gentle rotation side to side that way. And then I lay on my side, come up to hands and knees. And then this is how we get up safely without rocking or jumping or those more aggressive moves. So this is how I work a nice gentle flow of yoga poses in my yoga videos that are osteoporosis safe with modifications for how we can move, but it always feels better to get this mobility practice, it calms our nervous system, and helps us to be able to do the higher intensity strength exercises that we want and need as well. So I absolutely think that yoga is beneficial to helping uh, you know, quality of life for people with low bone density and osteoporosis, but we need to really be guided by people that are knowledgeable about bone health exercise and can make things specific for you if you need that. So I thank you for watching. I hope you found this valuable. If you learned something, anything new that you didn't know before about how to modify a pose or do it with osteoporosis, would you please leave me a comment below? I would appreciate it very much. And please share this with others that you know would benefit it. That would be the greatest compliment you could give me if you share this video with other people. Thank you. Namaste.